what you do frequently becomes your frequency. It's about more so the connection between food and sex. The food that they eating got sexual hormones in them. Especially if you eating chicken, you know, because they want them to reproduce faster. So they sticking them with all type of sexual steroids. So that come on to you. Then most of the food is died through stress. So you getting all them stress, you know, uh, melanin neurotransmitters that come yeah. from the food. So, and you have to look at promotion wise when it comes to food psychology, hot dogs. What is the concept of a hot dog? And why do a hot dog go between buns? Mm. What about pizza? Mm. How pizza is used for pedophiles? It's called pizza gate. But you see pizza represents the upside down triangle, which represents the wound of a woman. So food is sexual a word that I call estrogen annihilation. That's what's making us very effeminate. That's what's happening with the THC and the weed. That's what's happening and what they putting into all the food. And if you look at synthetic estrogen, it is, is a magnesium inhibitor and a manganese inhibitor. You can't produce zinc and zinc is what works with testosterone to create your actual seminal fluid or what we gonna call semen. So, you know, if, if you eating all these foods that's high in estrogen, high in all these different acidic acids that's being left behind as byproducts of synthetic chemicals that they putting in the food for additives and preservatives, these preservatives are literally not only behavior modifiers, mm -hmm. but they're sexual modifiers too. And that's what's really messing with us, man, and cutting off our circulation. I started studying a lot, and once I realized that, you know, dang, estrogen is naturally supposed to be in my body, but I'm not using the natural estrogen in my body I'm using the synthetic estrogen right. dang that's 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 robbing me you know because right. estrogen is not synthetic estrogen is an iron phosphate inhibitor too we need that for oxygen we need that to convert all types of other different steroids over so I'm starting to see that the food was robbing me of all the minerals and all the melanin neurotransmitters that I need to keep a balance of homeostasis so I say a good transitional diet will be the late great Dr. Sebi diet that's a good transitional diet you know uh, going the alkaline way and then cooking the food, you know, so-called cooked alkaline food. It's a very good transition. But after that, you have to graduate from that too and go into the raw side and stop putting fire to your food, which is changing mm. the chemical composition of the food anyway. But if you truly want to yield high vitality and uh, high living and keep your thoughts clear and be in vibration with your creator, you know, you have to do things all on how the creator planned it to be. If we was meant to cook our food, we would have something in our anatomy that creates fire. You know, like a dragon can breathe fire from his breath. Yeah. You know, if we was meant to eat meat, we would have claws, we have canines, we have short colons, you know, we'd sleep 16 to 20 hours a day. We'd be a horizontal where we can get up to 70 miles an hour to track down our prey. We don't have none of these things. If we was meant to cook, the creator Yahweh would have created pots and pans in the wilderness where we, it was pots and pans there. So if you look at the animal kingdom, I've never seen them get a pot and pan and cook their food. I've never seen them use oil to cook their food. I've never seen them fry anything. They rely on nature's natural resources. And we see that animals live longer than us. Why is that? That's because they are adapted to their natural habitat. You know, we are not, we have been put in a artificial environment and given us these concepts of cooking and these concepts of what true food is. Everything starts from that primitive gut too. It's three things that's created simultaneously at the same time. That's the nervous system, the primitive gut too, and something called the lipid sac. The lipid sac is the actual lymphatic system where it can clean up all the byproducts that the baby is getting from eating all the food that mother eat. Then you also have that blood, but blood and lymph is called the interstitium fluid of the body. This is all talking about the same chemical composition. From there, you got the primitive gut tool where everything grow from. They call it the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And when you start looking, and this is how holistic health is, your skin is made from the same cells as your brain. So if you have a skin problem, something is wrong with your brain. You start looking at your internal organs, they made for the same thing as your eyes. So I just think we need to be re-educated and taught of what true love is. And, and, and that love for self is gonna make us research health. Yeah. It's gonna make us research food. It's gonna make us research That's religion. It's gonna all have to start with that self-love. But you know, again, we letting people create our environment and putting us in these tanks. The ground is malnutrition. They done completely messed up the soil. The fruits that you're eating now are lacking a lot of their vital nutrients and nutrition. Even the Sabi diet, a lot of that stuff is lacking the stuff that wood had in there hundreds of years ago because what they doing to the earth, man. But if you look at it from a physical standpoint, just physiology, you look at it from our small intestinal tract, even when you get into the pH balance of something called trypsin.